Sam, thank you, Sam, for staying uh, nice. a Pleasure. little bit uh, more time for 11, 10 minutes. Um, I think it's important to, to have conversation with what I'm calling some guru or titans of uh, your industry. Mm. <laughs> and Sam, we're extremely proud to have you as a member at the FI Institute. And each time we speak, I don't know where are your limits. So I want to understand <laughs> more about your journey and how uh, a gentleman like you who in case you don't know deeply what uh, Sam is coming from, not just as a media and technology investor, but uh, who, who uh, I would say, uh, prior to Galaxy, he was also a partner at Managing Group at Lambert Media, but more importantly, he graduated from Harvard Law School, University of Oxford, University of Boulder, Colorado. But my question to you, you know, when I started my career almost 40 years ago, my first boss was telling me, Richard, don't try to do too many things because by doing too many things, you will do nothing. <laughs> but it seems that this is not valid for you because you are investing and you are really operating in multiple fields. You know, I was taking the least traditional media, crypto, Web3, gaming, interactive media, AI, deep technologies, climate, mining, digital, therapeutics, healthcare, education. <laughs> Tell us more about what is your journey and why all of this. Uh, well, well, first of all, thank you for having me out here. It's an honor and, uh, and, and it's been an amazing couple of days and I'm always so impressed with the people you gather and, and, and I really do feel uh, humbled to be having this conversation with you. Um, I, I think, you know, when you put it that way, I'm kind of asking myself, wow, am I, am I doing too many things here? <laughs> um, my path, I... I in anticipation of us talking, I was thinking you know, on the ride over here, what is the common thread? Um, because it, for sure I've been interested in, in a lot of different things and you know, now I go back on it and I try to decide, okay, what took me from media uh, and, and into what for me was really at first a fairly linear path. I was you know, a philosophy nerd that was going to go get a PhD in philosophy and then was talked into going to law school so I could do oh, something like Alex practical. Carp. I was, Philosophy is bringing everywhere now. Well, and it, it, we can come back to that, but I think if you were you know, interested like I was in philosophy of mind in particular and consciousness, it's actually amazing to now be on this side 25 years later from after my studies and looking at technologies that are bringing into practical reality all of these thought experiments that we used to just sit around the table uh, and, and and discuss with each other. We're now living them uh, and, and in a moment in this exponential or on this exponential curve where we're, we're living them, we're asking the questions and the answers are happening in real time. Uh, and in many cases, I think faster than, uh, than we're ready for and then maybe faster than most people even realize. And that's a really important part of this conversation. Um, but for me, the, the common thread was ultimately just being fortunate enough, I think, to uh, be a nerd and, and hover around at 30,000 feet looking at what was interesting and then find a way to dive really deep into the things that I thought mattered. And that's been the thread. And it, it actually um, continues for me today to, to be fundamentally first about um, how, how do I just surround myself with the people that I want to spend time with and then inspire me to think about things in unique ways, or, or even just to kind of buzz at a frequency that I think is optimal for taking action. And, and that you can apply to, to anything. And so in my case, media was super interesting. Uh, I got into the video game industry in 2009 and invested in my, my first game studio then after having been in really traditional media. I used to say for 10 years, Every old media business that's been in secular decline, I was probably involved in trying to build or put together or operate. Uh, and then I discovered games and, and realized, wow, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to just step in front of the traffic, as my old partner and mentor Michael Lambert used to say. It's like, you know, you, you can go fight and try to catch these melting ice cubes, or you can really just go do something that's, that's got growth potential. And that set me into spending time and in, in looking at emerging media and higher growth uh, digital businesses. But the, the, the people that I was meeting along the way and the quality of the conversations and energetically and emotionally just feeling excited and in flow to address these issues is, is what got me excited and what drove really all the decisions that I made. But as a visioner, really, which you are, and uh, futuristic, how do you see 
the next 20 years? How do you see the future of uh, news media? How do you see the future of VCs? How do you see your future? <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> if you had asked me that question, probably if we were sitting up here at any time in the last several million years, and you asked me that question, you said, tell me what the future in 20 years is going to look like, or tell me what the future in a thousand years is going to look like, I would have been able to answer that question. <laughs> and that was true for like so much of human history. And now, I think it would be incredibly naive to tell you I know or have, have much insight into what 20 years from now is going to look like. I mean, I think it's, it's generally been the case in my life that things don't happen quite as, as fast as you believe they will. And I, I do think that's still the case, even though we're like on this, on this bottom of this exponential curve maybe. Um, but I'm quite certain that, um, that, that things are going to look um, pretty radically different in 20 years. And I don't think they're going to be the worst, most dystopian version of Because of, the of AI or... Uh... I, and not just because of AI, but AI is one of the exponential technologies that we are all living with and amongst and, what and developing and building. What else I, would have an impact on our future? I, I mean, we have... AI, synthetic biology, like if we want to talk about like the things that are, that are really big, um, I mean we have climate, we have genetics. Uh, genetics for sure, and genetics and the ability, uh, you know, one of the most profound things to think about is um, all these big transformational technologies that are also, they're being developed and simultaneously distributed to everybody in, uh, in, in, in a, you know, wildly fast uh, amount of time. And so we have the, the means and capabilities now, um, you know, for, for, for good and bad, have been uh, democratized, decentralized, uh, and that is accelerated. And we just have to be aware of it. And I, and I think it's, you know, the first thing that we need to do is accept that that is what's happening. I don't think we can contain it. I'm not a, you know, again, I'm, I'm not a, um, a, 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 a dystopian um, pessimist and, and, and certainly not somebody arguing for us to, to necessarily stop innovating. I think we need to innovate. We're going to need to innovate our way out of this. But I'm also not, um, I, I'm not convinced that we are ready yet um, in, in, and that we are going to approach the decisions that need to get made. And going back to that point of like, how do we make decisions um, from the right state of mind? How do we try to like, get ourselves into an optimal flow state? Whether it's a decision when you wake up in the morning and why people should meditate before they start their day, or whether it's a decision when you're sitting there in a position of power and authority to, to, to change the world with a lot of the, 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 the things you're going to decide to do. Precisely. I know you're a man of values. What do you think we could do, you could do to really impact our humanity? So what I've decided to do, and again, I, you know, it's one little thing, but what I've decided to do is focus all of my energy on, uh, on, on attempting to spark the people around me to feel that state of flow and, and actually approach in their own lives um, the decisions that they're going to make from what I think is uh, a, a, a better, more informed, more inspired state of mind. And so that means um, having conversations like this. That means thinking about, um, uh, uh, you know, initiatives. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, about four years ago, I was sitting around. My, my business partner, Mike Novogratz, who is, amongst other things, an incredibly, almost incomprehensibly charitable person, actually. And he really uh, gets passionate about something and focuses on it and puts a lot of resources behind it. And that's been inspiring to me. Um, and we, with a couple of people that, that, that run the foundational arm of Galaxy, um, we were... Uh, we were thinking about, well, like, what can we do? What's the, what's the technology, if you will, um, in the way that technology is really just about leverage to achieve an accompli you know, a desired outcome? What's the, what's the technology we could try to apply here to be more impactful with respect to philanthropy? And you know, what we came up with is, what if we can talk to people and come up with a way to help them understand and feel not in their brains and their minds, but in their hearts and, and, and viscerally, feel what it's like and how, how good it can feel to give your money away. And how do, we, how do we help people who are otherwise sitting there saying, 
I'm not ready to be a philanthropist yet. I'm gonna work and I'm gonna build my career and then later down the road I'll, you know, I'll be philanthropic because they're thinking philanthropic means uh, it's about how much money do I give to this particular thing. Instead of like, wow, what does it feel like to understand that one thing you can do with your money is give it to something you care about and that feels really good. And so for you, it feels really good. And we said, and this doesn't have to be complicated. Technology doesn't have to be complicated. And we said, well, let's just ask people to make a commitment of, on a percentage basis instead of a dollar basis and just commit to give 1% of your income away every year and see how that feels and whether that is $1 or a million dollars. Like, make that commitment, give it away, it's material to you, and then feel it. Let yourself feel what that's like. And, you know, we went around, we told this story, and the, the, the guys running Galaxy Gives are the, the, the best fundraisers I've encountered in my life. And we just went out there and told that story, and we led by example, and we asked people of all, uh, of, of all income levels to do it and participate it, in it um, at, at 1% or higher. And, uh, you know, four years later, we have thousands of people that w never thought they were supposed to be giving money away or were ready to do that in their lives. We've raised $250 million for criminal justice reform uh, and, and political reform in this country. And it's been the most obvious and impactful um, innovation that I've been involved with. When you will go back home tonight or tomorrow, what will you keep from these past two days? I know you had a mm. lot of conversation. You met a lot of people. I know how the time is precious, but uh, what are the two, three great ideas or I would say outcomes that you will take from this conversation, global conversation in Miami? Yeah, I, I mean, for me, it, it's been another FII experience that um, somehow you continue to elevate the, the, the people that you bring here and the conversations that we've had. And so I think the biggest takeaway for me is just um, how do we do more of this? And so I've spent two days, every conversation I've had for two days has been interesting. Um, I think one of the realizations that I had about this community and this, and this platform that you've built is, you know, it's, it's rare, we, we all go to a lot of conferences in our lives, I think it's rare to bring together an organization and a community um, where in close proximity, literally like in this room and across the, the street, if you want to go up, and His Excellency is up there meeting with people that inspire him from the ideas he hears down here. I, I've never seen the combination of uh, an organization that has both uh, a mandate and the resources to actually implement the, the ideas that we all create here together. And so f for me, I think it's, um, it's that proximity of mandate and resources um, that we need to try to you know, continue to build and preserve and activate. Uh, and, and then, again, state of mind. How do we bring people uh, together? How do we get them into flow? How do we get everybody buzzing here with like, feeling like they can make a difference and they're excited to try? And then give them the results that shows that this is worth everybody's time. Last question. Mm. If you have one geography and one sector to invest today, which will be? Uh, so, so for me, it is, it is flow state inducing technologies. So how do we, whether that's digital or analog, like what I think everybody needs to be focused on is how, what is out there that we can build, what, wh whether it's an analog tech like a conference or whether it's a digital experience like a, an empathy, you know, uh, inducing uh, immersive VR experience, whatever we want to talk about, how do we focus on um, on, on, on putting people into the right state of mind to take action because the, what we don't know, and I'm certain we don't know, what is coming that we're going to need to address, but we need to be ready to make the right decisions. And if you have to put your money somewhere, where it will be? One, just one sector. Oh, wow. Uh, did, did, As an did, investor, did, which advice would you did, give? For me, it's, it, my, I mean, I'm pitching my own book here, but it's, uh, it, you know, it's the convergence of digital and, and, and physical experiences. And for me, especially right now, that is about um, digital therapeutics and, 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 and how do we take the best of what I've seen in, and the behaviors that I see, especially our young people learning in mass from video games and from the other stuff that they're experiencing, how do we apply that to things that are gonna in, induce flow state for them? Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of applause for Sam Engelbar. Thank you, thank you, thank you Sam. Thanks, that's great, thanks, yeah, really good, thanks Richard.